just a couple of days away in October the 7th, uh, 2022, uh, NEO, uh, translating as Blue Sky Coming. They're certainly coming all right. I tell you what, they're coming with uh, both barrels. They're launching their range of products right in the heart of Germany, taking it to the big boys. Audi has already taken exception. <laughs> we'll get onto that a little bit later on. They've also managed battery swap technology. I'm Ed, this is uh, Evie Peasy. Um, thank you so much, first of all, for watching uh, my previous two videos. Uh, first one went viral, it's got over half a million views, and the second one on the Zeker 001 uh, has had well over 100,000 views. Um, there's the links, uh, look at the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Um, uh, we've had a, a very, very good start to this channel. Today, I want to talk about, um, effectively, um, Tesla's rivals. One in particular springs to mind. They've got a full range of vehicles that rival um, that of the Tesla lineup. There's a company out there, they've already started in uh, Norway, battery swap technology. Another thing that Tesla trialed 2013, 2014, and it quietly went away. Um, Elon had this great idea, however, um, they only had one battery swapping station in California, in the US, and kind of in 2021, they'd, uh, they'd mooted the fact that um, they were going to pursue the battery swap facilities. Uh, NEO have got over a thousand battery swap facilities in China. So they've managed to succeed where Elon couldn't. Um, they, obviously the success rate that they had and the uptake for that meant that they decided to quietly move that onto the back burner and concentrate on the supercharger network. Now, some other blue sky thinking um, is the simple fact that uh, Neo, you can buy the car and you can rent the battery uh, per month, subscribe. They have various capacities available, 75 kilowatt hours, 100 kilowatt hours in Europe, and even in China, they've got a 150 kilowatt hour battery. That is massive. That's up to, you know, 600 miles range, 1,000 kilometers easy. So for all of those that uh, said that that wasn't possible, you take a 150 kilowatt hour battery, um, possibly solid state, I don't quite know. If you know this thing, uh, stick it in the comments. I, I can learn lots from these videos and it's a two-way process, a learning process all the way. So especially with a, a coefficient of drag, uh, matching that of the Tesla Model S of uh, about 208, I think it is. Um, certainly uh, in the low drag side of things, um, that it's entirely possible to have that range of a thousand kilometers plus. So the Chinese, they live in a lot of high rise buildings, so overnight um, charging isn't exactly uh, commonplace. So for them to have all sorts of things, I'm gonna talk about other battery services that are available, um, so hang around for that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do, and hopefully you'll enjoy this video just as much. So the NEO uh, group, uh, they've got effectively the Model S, which is the ET7, the Model 3, the ET5, the Model X, which is the ES8, and the Model Y, which would be the ES7. But you see, Neo just haven't appeared out of uh, nowhere. They burst onto the scene in 2016 with the EP9, the performance two-seater electric car. And uh, they launched the brand at the same time. Now, this EP9 was an absolute monster. Uh, one megawatt of power, so uh, each wheel individually powered by a 250 kilowatt motor. Uh, brought it to 1,360 um, horsepower. <laughs> it could do naught to 200 kilometers an hour in 7.1 seconds, and it would top out at 217 miles per hour. Um, and on May the 12th, 2017, it broke the existing EV record on the, uh, the Nordschleife at the Nürburgring. Yes, they brought their experience from their e-racing team directly uh, to influence that car. And what a way to come on the scene. No one heard of William Lee back then, but they know now. He's effectively a rock star in China. 
um, and we'll learn a bit more about the kind of the Neo family as we go along. <laughs> they built six CP9s. Um, they did threaten to build another 10. Don't know whether they sold price tag $1.48 million each. But it's not the EP9 that people are talking about these days. It's an awesome range of cars, right the way through, uh, sedans and uh, SUVs, perfect for every day. So the ES8, the SUV, um, was launched in Norway in uh, 2021. It's a full-size SUV. Uh, it won't be coming to uh, Germany just for the moment, along with its uh, sibling, the ES6, because if you think about it, S6 and S8 uh, happen to be used on a regular basis by another well-known German manufacturer. So Audi has filed a lawsuit. Uh, the ES8 obviously is still being delivered in Norway, but they have uh, halted that for the moment, the ES8 and the ES6. They will bring others though. Uh, they will launch all the Neo 2.0 platform cars, the ET7, the ET5 and the ES7. Um, and Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, are on the cards in 2022. They've just extended their lease last year uh, for another 10 years of their headquarters in the US, and that would all smack uh, with uh, ex expanding uh, their North American operations. Um, and rumor has it by 2025. They're in China. They have sold many tens of thousands of vehicles already. They have launched in Europe. They're gonna spread through Hopefully the UK will see some right-hand drive models and then the US beyond. So uh, watch this space, folks. Uh, you might not have heard of Neo right now, but uh, they've got a couple of unique selling points um, and that really, really makes them interesting. Neo pride themselves in their interaction with their customers. And in fact, it starts with the whole Neo Experience Center. There is one in Europe, in, uh, in Oslo, and they've got them dotted out throughout China, and they'll continue to do that. These are like no other showrooms you've effectively seen. You come in, you have a coffee, you look at the cars, you can go for a drive, you can drop in, have a chat, uh, spend the day. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite unique. They have spent many, many millions um, on these Neo houses. So you could understand that it's all very, very cash heavy to start a business like this, especially with the battery swap stations on all of these Neo houses. Now they did run into trouble a few years back and refinanced and uh, all looks good so far. So you can understand how uh, a company um, like this, trying to build the cars, trying to launch them, trying to do everything at the top end, they see this as a luxury brand. Um, and from what I can see so far, uh, they're living up to that. They hold Neo days. The next Neo day is in Berlin, and that will see the launch um, of the car. So I'll uh, either put a link at the end screen um, to the uh, to the video, uh, the launch video, or I'll put a little link upstairs um, here for you to have a look at that. What? I've got a, a little sprocker here. Um, she wants a lot of attention, so um, <laughs> forgive me if she she pops into the uh, into the camera occasionally. I um, hope you like the background. Some people took exception to me walking the dogs around a field. So here we are in front of the little cottage. Um, dates back to 1650. <laughs> All of those of you that think you've got a bit of history, um, you know what? The UK we've got <laughs> we've got an awful lot here. Let's look at battery swap stations. Um, they've rolled out over a thousand stations in China. You basically drive up front, uh, your automated system takes over, you hit a button and you stay in the car. It reverses, backs the car into the, uh, the, uh, the unit, probably no more than about 60 meters squared, about uh, three parking spaces or thereabouts. And uh, it basically uh, ramps you up, takes out the old battery, puts the new one in, and they reckon in three minutes from the start of the process. And I think whilst the car backs itself in and all the rest of it, five minutes is more likely, but you're getting a full battery swamp. Um, you don't have that anxiety that your battery has been degraded, rapid charging all the time. Um, and you have a confidence that the batteries are all checked before 
before they're reinstalled. So you don't actually own the battery, you're renting it, and we'll get onto pricing later. And that's where it really, really makes it interesting. If you don't have to spend 10 or 12,000 euros, dollars, pounds on a, on a battery and merely rent it, um, <laughs> it makes the cost of these things absolutely phenomenal. So, um, all the cars can be rapid charge if you've no ability um, to do that overnight. And uh, then in five minutes, you have a fully charged battery installed in a station. Now, there are two different generations of station. Uh, the first ones um, could do 120 swaps in a day. The second gens, which I believe that's what's gone into the first one in Germany, 312 battery swaps in the day. You order it over the app, you rock up once you're accepted, and uh, all is good. They take over from there. There are other ways you can do it. You can rent a battery service as well, where they'll even bring a van round and charge up um, if you're at home, or they will take it for a battery swap, or they will go and rapid charge it somewhere if that's what you want. Those are services available in China at the moment to owners. We're not quite sure what's going to happen here in Europe. The other advantage is that you're not going to get left behind as battery tech improves. You saw my video, hopefully, about the Keelin inside, uh, the new battery technology with uh, four times the surface area uh, for cooling purposes, so therefore four, four times the charging speed available if you can keep the battery cool. Um, so as that progresses, maybe even uh, solid state batteries, if you can fit it into a standard size pack, you can swap it. Um, your car is gonna stay basically the same. It's got over the air updates as well. So your car is gonna be updated. Your battery technology is going to be updated. Um, it's a win-win. If you can think of any disadvantages, um, let me know. They're very keen to point out the fact that these battery swap stations, um, they're there um, on a minimal footprint they're going to use no more than 550 kilowatts of power at any one time. And they design their charging strategy to avoid the uh, peak uh, electricity demands on the grid. They store about 13 batteries, is what it says here. They aim to charge somewhere between 40 and 80 kilowatts. So not necessarily a massive rapid charge and certainly that's what they'll be aiming to do so to not to um, destroy the battery in the process. If they use the grid for off-peak charging as best they can that whole process can be reversed. They call it a virtual power plant. Um, they can reverse the power flow at peak times to supply the grid. <laughs> you know what? You get enough of these dotted around the country if they can charge up battery packs at cheap overnight rates and then resupply the grid again um, at, the, at the peak times, you might find that they'll, they'll cut a deal with the energy supplier and they might even break even on their energy. <laughs> so, yes, darling. What's wrong? I'm not, I'm not getting down, no. No, I'm not. I'm just talking to the nice people. I'm just not talking to the nice people on the camera. No, you're not getting up. No, you're not. No, stop it. Right. <laughs> well, well, folks, this is <laughs> this is Poppy. <laughs> she's a she's a bit precious, aren't you? Yes. Well, then I'm just sitting editing this. That's more than enough for one video. That's a little bit of an introduction to Neo. Uh, part two will all be about individual pricing specifications, the models, the colors, what you can expect. Um, more of that then. Um, until part two, all the best now. Thank you. Bye-bye.